All righty, welcome to another four on four cube draft. And we've got a special return here. Sam Rolf is back. Love it. Sam, Sam's awesome. Though he is on the other team, so I'll have to crush him. This opening pack was looking pretty weak till I spied my man, Urza. Urza, Lord High Artificer, is, you know, one of the, the, the triumvirate of things I'm looking for, which is Tolarian Academy, Urza, and Michelle's Workshop as like super mana generation. I'm slamming Urza over Expressive Iteration, Ignoble Hierarch, just all sorts of whatevers, cards that I'm not even that worried about. Okay. We first picked Urza. Second pick, there's Misty Rainforest. There's Crucible of Worlds. Monster Manual is a kind of new addition. So it's three mana sorcery, mill five, and bring get a creature back into your hand that you milled. And then it's a four mana artifact. You can pay two and tap it, put a creature from your hand onto the battlefield. Pretty strong card in like a reanimator sort or big creature sort of deck, a sneak attack style deck. Just put an Eldrazi right into play or whatever. I'm going to take Misty Rainforest. If the Misty weren't here, I'd probably just take Crucible, especially since Titania might wheel, and those are pretty good in the same kind of deck. But I think a blue fetch, especially a blue-green fetch, when Urza most often goes into blue-green, just because green has like all of uh, things like Fast Bond that work really well with Urza. So I'm going to slam Misty here and pass on Crucible, Flame Tongue, a bunch of lands. So let's see, four lands... Flame Tongue, Recruiter, Collective Brutality. Yeah, I mean, I might get a Talisman back. I wouldn't mind that. So what are the squads? We got myself, Timrod, Team Jabro, and Falero. Love it. Battling against Sam Rolf, Will Kruger, Troll Aesthetic, Matt, and uh, Mac the Knife. So what are we going to take here? We've taken Urza. We've taken Misty. I do like Lotus Field with Candelabra, and I'm already looking for Candelabra and Urza decks, especially if, you know, fingers crossed we get an Academy. But I think I'm probably going to take the Narset. There's also Lorien Reveal. I, my, my respect for this card has gone up a ton. I mean, it's not surprising. This card ends up seeing play in Legacy, in Vintage, in Modern. Like, it's just good in every format where it's legal, basically. Popper, all that. And the fact that it can get a dual land and is just a card you can cast when you have a lot of mana is awesome. But Narset's really good. And taking an early Narset, especially if you can pick up some draw sevens, which you also want with Urza, I think is better and yeah there's a pretty decent chance lotus field wheels there's also scalding tarn which is very very good but i think i'm happy with narset here and oh wow this pack has some bangers there's frantic search cryptic command upheaval and mox diamond i think i'm going to take the mox diamond it i really don't love passing any of these blue cards like i like all of them especially since if you can cast Cryptic, it's a very good card. And this deck's starting very strongly blue, which I love. But Mox Diamond accelerates out Urza, accelerates out Narset. It's just busted acceleration is not something I pass up on. And as much as I like upheaval, I don't like taking it before knowing what my mana generation situation is going to be. Right now, I've just got Urza, which is a good start. But what if I end up like a blue control deck that doesn't have anything like a Mox or a Mana Vault or Mana Crypt or Academy, any of those big mana generators, then upheaval is kind of lackluster. I think I got to start with the Mox Diamond. I might wheel one of the blue cards because this pack is also really strong. Two duels, Rabble Master, Frantic Surge, like that's just a good pack. This pack less so. This pack's actually quite bad. There's not a single blue card. Well, I guess there's Thief of Sanity. I'm probably just going to take Chain Lightning. It's not that I think Chain Lightning is amazing, but it's a good, efficient removal spell. Blue-red is probably the second most likely combination after blue-green when, when starting with Urza. And I like Chain Lightning more than Fork Bolt. Just three is greater than two. It's just math. Uh, I like Thief of Sanity, but I, I like Efficient Removal more. Now there's Show and Tell, which can be good, but I don't know that I want to slam it here. It's not the best. These last couple picks have been kind of bad. There's also Lightning Greaves. It's interesting. So what does Lightning Greaves do? Well, you can equip it on Urza to make your Urza not die. That's kind of cool. You can also tap it for mana with Urza. So it's good with Urza, but it's kind of bad outside of that. I might just spec on Show and Tell. I don't think Savai Triumph looking all that hot, and I can't even get it with Misty. It's the one Triumph you can't. Nissa is okay, but I don't really want a double green five drop. Show and Tell, if I get Portal to Phyrexia, which is a card I'm kind of looking for anyway, is kind of nice. All right, let's just take Show and Tell and see kind of where we end up. Now there's a Braid and Goldspan and Mindstone. These are all fine. Sacred Foundry is okay. This pack's just all red and white cards. Actually, it's literally 
<laughs> five red cards, two white cards, and a red-white duel, plus an artifact, which I might actually just take the artifact. I Look, I like a braid. It's fine. I already have chain lightning. It makes it a little less necessary. I don't really want a double red card that much, and I like Mindstone a fair amount. Ooh, Mirror Battle Ball. There's also World Spine Worm. <laughs> There's also Triskelion and Taiga. Like, these are all intriguing. Show and tell World Spine Worm's not actually that good. You put a 15-15 Trample into play, but they put their best thing into play, and this has no ETB. If they have an Exile, Control, Bounce card at all, it really just works. Whereas Battle Ball's castable, and with Urza can go pretty nuts. So I think I take that. Taiga would let Misty cast Chain Lightning. It lets it get a red green land, which is good, but I think Battle Ball's better, and I think it's better than Trike. Though I do like that a Battle Ball showed up there. It means that it may be more likely that uh, artifacts are open. The last couple picks have been really devoid of blue cards. I don't like that. I might just take Bitter Reunion now. It's good in a show and tell deck if I end up going like show and tell reanimator. On the other hand, I could take Imperial Recruiter. It goes and gets Urza. Kind of like that. Yeah, let's just let's just recruit. Mm, okay. The green white lands and the white cards and the green cards all wield. I don't love that. I was hoping to get something back. I guess Crucible and Titania are both gone. That's, I believe, the pack that was in. I guess I might just take Monster Manual. If I have Show and Tell already, Monster Manual and Show and Tell kind of go the same direction. So let's do that. Now I think I do take Stomping Ground because it makes Misty into a Teamer land. And I have my choice of expensive cards there, but I think I'd rather just do that. Oh, Cryptic Wield. That's really nice. Yeah, sorry, Rebel Master. Not, not what I want. And I think I'm going to take the Heartbeat because there's a chance I actually do play Heartbeat. And I don't really mind passing Troll Ascetic, a Sulfuric Vortex. Is that true? No, Heartbeat's actually not that likely to get played. I'll take that. I guess I'll hate the Selfless Spirit. I don't... Well, could this deck play Kogla? I guess it's not zero that this deck would play Kogla. And Selfless Spirit's not a card I care that much about passing. Okay. So this was an okay pack one. Needed some help still. Ooh, and we got some. There's a Mox Jet. You love to see it. Sadly, passing Retrofitter and Chrome Host. And I don't think either is that likely to wield. The people on this server are too, too into this kind of deck now. Kogla can get out for now. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to take the Mox Jet here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six for sure. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, there's a chance one of the, the Retrofitter wheels more, more likely than the Seed Shark because this is good in just almost any blue deck. But I don't think there's a big hope of either wheeling, if we're being honest. Oh, I like Amisha's Workshop, but no, I'm going to take Hole Breacher. Hole Breacher is a busted card, and now with Hole Breacher, any draw seven becomes just unbelievable. Well, then I'm going to put Monster Manual and Kogla down here, because who knows? Yeah, we're going to slam the Hole Breacher here. Maybe wheel... Yeah, we're not going to wheel Grim Monolith or Talisman. We might wheel Icar Wellspring, though besides Urza, we don't have super high, big artifact payoffs. I do like Mitchell's Workshop, but Hole Breacher is just nuts. Okay... This pack's a lot worse. We don't have the Crucible, so Zornor becomes less intriguing. Besides just being a zero mana artifact, I guess. There is Duress. Duress is a strong card, and I have a Mox Jet and a Mox Diamond that can cast it. Plus this Misty gives me outs. I'm not loving it, but I think Firebolt is a lot weaker. I mean, Firebolt is a blue-red card, or rather a red card, and... Right now, I'm straight blue-red. In fact, the Stomping Ground and the Misty just combined to make it a blue-red land. I don't even need the green mana yet. Though, who knows? Maybe Monster Manual does make the cut. Uh, would have, wouldn't have minded a big creature here. This pack's pretty bad. I think I just take the Dress because it's the best card, and if the mana works for it, the mana works for it. All right, well, I'm slamming Force of Will. I, I think Force of Will is just broken. I mean, Windswept Teeth is good. Restless Vinestock could be at some point good. I do really like Pest Infestation. I don't love passing it. Same with Grief. But in a heavy blue deck, Force of Will is just not quite power, but it has a similar effect on the game. And it's kind of funny to say that, but one of the purposes of having, like, say, a Mox is to just go Mox, play a card a turn earlier. Force of Will lets you just blank their entire turn. It's somewhat close to Time Walk in that sense. They tap out on, you tap out on turn four, then they tap out on their turn four or five, and you force their play. That's really big. This pack is not. 
Zerda could go with the Grim Monolith I passed. I don't love passing Entomb alongside that Animate Dead, but I don't really think there's a way around it. I might just take Black Green Talisman. Would have loved to see a draw seven here, maybe pack three. Titan of Industry I don't think is good enough to show and tell into play. Let's just take Black Green Talisman. All right, now there's Sahili, which is fantastic with Urza. It's also Sheldock, though. Sheldock's another busted card, and I think they're kind of close, but also passing Sahili doesn't usually help the other team. Passing Sheldock helps anyone who's blue. I just think Sheldock is too good to, to pass up. And a six-pick Sheldock is actually a gift. So the show and tell is currently not making the cut. I'm just kind of blue-red, really looking for draw sevens. I have Narset and Hole Breacher, so having a, a draw seven would really uh, amp this deck up. I'm a couple picks away from finding out if uh, Retrofitter Foundry wheels. If Retrofitter Foundry wheels, which I, again, I don't think it's going to, but if it does, that's a great sign because it also means that no one else has taken Tolerant Academy yet, most likely, which means Tolerant Academy is still maybe in a pack that hasn't been opened, which means maybe I could open it or get past it. Not that I'm super likely to get past it, not these days. And I only have two red cards, by the way. I have one black card, and I have a lot of blue cards. I also, if I get enough creatures, Monster Manual is a powerful card, but I'm not really that close to doing so. Having Mox Jet, Mox Diamond, and Black Green Talisman, that actually makes it pretty likely this duress makes the cut at this point. Falero on six packs. So you always got to keep updated as who, who's got all the packs. All right, so the other... Th angle this deck could play is if I do get some good big creatures, I could end up with a monster manual show and tell. All right, so there's Sail into the West, which isn't as good of a combo with Hole Breacher as you would like because they just choose not to discard their hand <laughs> and they won't, but it's still really good if you're accelerating. So I think I probably got to take Sail into the West over Ice Fang, Tamio, even Watery Grave, passing Necromancy. Well, we'll... Will's going to have a wealth of reanimate cards, I guess. Oh, love a Lotus Petal. Yeah, I'm a pretty big Lotus Petal fan, especially I just took a draw seven. I don't think Bolus is Citadel. I mean, it's good with show and tell. Hmm. Citadel show and tell is nice. I don't have Sensei's top. But Citadel show and tell is interesting. And I am playing black. No, I'm just going to take Lotus Petal. I, I feel like... I feel like just... Cheap acceleration is just always great. All right, so yeah, I didn't wheel any of those things. I will take Subtlety, though. Subtlety is great. It's a kind of another pitch spell. Draw sevens and pitch spells is a really good combination, so let's just take that. Currently, I'm, I'm really not very committed to red. Right now, I've got an Imperial Recruiter, which is not making the cut, and a Chain Lightning, which maybe could, but I'm basically mono blue with Duress and Sail into the West. I am going to play Sail into the West for sure. So I could pass Thalia to Will. I don't feel that bad about it because he passed a really late Selfless Spirit and Guardian of Giraper. I, I don't feel like in a pack with a bunch of white cards, I don't feel like Will's very likely to be playing Thalia. And Timrod loves those kinds of decks, who's on my team. Plus there's a Student of Warfare in the pack that is worse than Thalia. I might take Torsten. If I end up in a show-and-tell sneak-style deck, Torsten could be good. And it's also just hating a reanimator card, I guess. This pack is all cards I'm not going to play. I guess I'll just take the generic best card. Oh, I guess I could take Goblin Welder here. No, actually Bonfire is still better, I think. I just, I'm not a really big Goblin Welder believer, and I don't really have much that goes with it. So let's take Bonfire, and we have like three red cards. Well, I'll take Mindslaver here. Even even though I didn't take the Goblin Welder, I still feel like Mindslaver is, is decent. I guess I'll take Tide Taker because I think it's a little stronger. Eladomri's call. All right, all these white cards can just go. All right, let's do it. Okay. Well, interesting. So there's Tinker, but we already know Blightsteel and Bolus' Citadel are gone. Portal to Phyrexia is not. And Portal is also fantastic with Show and Tell. And I have Mindslaver and Battlesphere. There's also Echo of Eons, which is fantastic with Hole Breacher and Narset. But I don't have a way to discard it or a Lion's Eye Diamond. I think I just take the Tinker. This is looking like a pretty good Tinker deck. And the fact that Portal to Phyrexia is still on the loose is really big. I like Prismatic Vista, but my mana is good enough that I could just take Remand. Remand is a 
pretty busted card. I like Jace too, but Remand is fantastic. All right. It's not too late for Talarian Academy, right? Right? We could get a Talarian Academy. All right, I'm going to put Mindslaver in the pile for now, because if you have Tinker, Mindslaver I think is pretty good. Really would like a Memory Jar here. That would be another great one, because Tinker for Jar with Hole Breacher is really awesome. Obviously getting Time Twister or Wheel of Fortune would be fantastic. Yeah, there's a lot of cards I could get that would be great. This isn't... I mean, I would certainly take Academy. This is actually not quite yet a busted Academy deck, but if I guess if I got a third pick Academy Pack 3, which, again, very unlikely... If I did, I would go pretty hard on, on maximizing it. Okay. Okay, so we'll pass Corpse Dance and Smuggler's Copter, what makes it more likely uh, that he's not playing Reanimate. I think I'm going to take the Copter. It's a little rough because I don't have a ton of creatures. It's just the best card. I don't really like passing it. There's also Parallax Wave, but I, I feel like Matt's not playing white either, so maybe it's safe to pass this. I don't have any combos with Kinan. Like, I don't have Basalt Mon or Grim Monolith, rather. Talisman of Conviction's fine, but I feel like I could do better. I'm just going to take Smuggler's Copter, I think, and if I get a couple more creatures in, that's great. It's also a, a good thing to just tinker away, though so is Hard Evidence, which is good, too. Yeah, I just kind of feel like I should take that. And this pack is... Pretty weak for me, unfortunately. I guess Blue Green Talisman's fine. I just don't have any. I mean, I guess I can Golos for Sheldock, but no, nah, I've got some acceleration into Golos. This is just not really the, the fourth pick I want because it's looking unlikely that I'm going to get an actual draw seven. Like, I have Sail into the West, but that doesn't combo with Hole Breacher. It's a lot of shame. Um, do I want another Talisman? But I have Mox, Mox, Petal, Mindstone, Talisman. I kind of feel like Golos is going to be a little better. And if Emery wheels, that would be fantastic. But I, I'm just not the biggest Emery fan in the world. All right. We've got Itali. We have Kiki, but we can't do much with Kiki. Agatha's Soul Cauldron is interesting because with Urza, that you can, any creature you have with, if you exile Urza, all your creatures with plus one, plus one counters are Urza's, which is pretty great. Gets both the abilities because both the mana ability and the five mana ability. But I might take Itali just to go with show and tell. And at that point, I might even get monster manual in the into the mix because I have some decent green fixing kind of for free and I'm playing sail into the west yeah I guess I do like that and oh there's memory jar and portal I gotta take portal portals busted with show and tell and with tinker jar is also great with hole breacher but uh, will jar wheel one two three four five no I don't think it will. I think it's like one card short of wheeling. It's possible if someone wants both... If someone wants Beseech, it might wheel. But right now, Stoneforge, Cathar Commando, Shallow Grave. The problem is Batter Skull and Stoneforge in the same pack means both don't aren't that likely to get picked. Timrod will be back shortly, I'm assuming. And Garrick's not that good. So, yeah, I don't think that Memory Jar is very likely to wheel here. Which is a shame, but I think that Portal's too good to, to pass up. So, all right, I'm going to take the portal. Now there's Cauldra Complete, which is actually not a terrible card to tinker out. There's also Mightstone and Weakstone, which isn't a terrible card here either. Now I kind of wish I had the Goblin Welder. <laughs> it actually is turning into a Goblin Welder deck. I still don't have a good discard outlet, though, is the thing. I guess I have Smuggler's Copter. Um, I just don't think I'm going to tinker for Cauldra very much, because it's worse than getting Battlesphere or Portal or probably Mindslaver. And I don't think it's good enough to show and tell either. So I think I'd rather have Mightstone, Weakstone. Maybe if Duretti wheels, I'll play it. Or I could just play Duretti. Yeah, you know, this isn't a terrible Duretti deck. I don't usually play Duretti, but I guess I'm in. Candelabra mocking me because I don't have uh, Academy here. And I'm not going to get it. It's okay, I'll take Spire Bluff. I'll just take a land. It's fine. And I don't think I want Fiery Islet. P and Cure on Nalar is actually not horrendous. Gives me a thing to Duretti or Tinker away. Um, Cruise Copter. I don't think I care about Char or any of these other things. All right. And now I just kind of hate the best card, which... Or I take a red-white land. I have no real use for white mana. Well, I guess with Golos I kind of do. Yeah, I don't even know what I would be hating there, so let's just do that. 
I guess I'll take the Corpse Dance, though. I don't think I'm going to play it. I, uh, the rest of these cards aren't very playable. Oh, and Holy Heat is great, so I'll just take that. I don't have... I don't think I want Voldar and Epic here that much, do I? It gives me an artifact to tinker away or Duretti away, and it's a discard outlet to like set up a Duretti, but Unholy Heat is just so good. Okay, is it time for Agatha's Soul Cauldron? Interesting. Um, or should I just hate the Kiki Jiki? I guess I'll just take Kiki, I don't know. I think I'm more likely to want to hate Cathar Commando unless is there a chance I would play Shallow Grave? No, I don't think there is. All right. I think this deck ended up ended up okay. The Chain Lightning's probably in at this point. Don't think Recruiter's in. He gets Urza, P and Kieran Lar. Yeah, that's it. And then maybe I put Monster Manual in too. Oh, this is a few cards over. Well, in that case, the Monster Manual probably doesn't make the cut with only seven creatures. Yeah. Um, psh, psh, psh. Copter, I think, is borderline, but maybe okay. Though maybe I end up cutting the Copter. I, I wasn't... I didn't think I was, like, the most likely to play it. All right. Let's go to deck build. All right. Ended up cutting the Duress and the Copter and the Bonfire as basically the last cuts. Playing one Forest and... 16 lands total plus Mox Jet, Mox Diamond, Lotus Petal. Just straight blue-red splashing a sail into the west. Got some big stuff over here to tinker for. I, I can Golos thanks to some Bait Canyon, Mox Diamond, Lotus Petal all providing white. So it's a pretty decent chance of that. Still sad that I didn't get any draw sevens, but this is a pretty solid little blue-red tinker deck. All right, battling is Mac here. And... <laughs> all right, I mean, yeah, I guess I keep... This hand needs show and tell more than it needs anything else. Let's see what we got under the shell dock. All right, well, it's got show and tell under the shell dock. I guess that's our plan. If I draw a blue source, I can have a turn three Urza, which is pretty nice. Oh, geez, okay. Don't like this. Uh, that's okay, I'm not gonna subtlety that. I'm not pitching Urza here. All right. Well, if I draw blue or red mana, then I get to Slam Urza or Pia, and they're both pretty good. Also, Mac is going to tear through his deck with Jace to get me to Sheldock territory, which I, I don't, don't mind either. Obviously, if I just don't draw a land this turn, it's going to be bad, but yeah, what can you do, right? Well, I'm glad I didn't play my Mox. Wow, he's really, really interested in getting that... Uh, Sheldock going. Discard two lands here. All right. I kind of want red more than blue. This is awful. I can't. I can't cast a talisman into into Dak Faden. I don't, just don't think that really works. It's not like it helps me cast my spells. All right. Well, I do have Sheldock, which at this rate is going to be live pretty soon. I might have to pitch Urza to subtlety now. We're getting to the point where it's just not going to help. Yeah, I mean, I kept a two lander, two land plus a mock, so basically a three lander on the play and with some fours. Well, I guess I didn't have the PF, but I had the other two fours and we're just missing. So, yep, that is how it goes. I do think that show and tell off Sheldock is a pretty strong comeback mechanism, so I can potentially get that going. It is unfortunate that Dak Faden is so good against my deck. But what I'm hoping is I just draw a red and it can play Pia and Kiran Nalar this turn, which pressures Dak even if he wants to steal like a Mox or a token. And then from there I can do some stuff. I discarded Fire Ice, interesting. Because icing my Sheldock on upkeep is probably pretty tempting. I mean, if I draw a blue, I could just play a blue and pass and leave up Sheldock next turn. Because it's looking like it'll be live. All right. <laughs> Forest. Uh, what a what a nice one. <laughs> Let's pass the turn. Uh, okay. Maybe this Mana Crypt will get the job done. Just lost three flips in a row. It's going to flip Jace now. 
I'm not doing anything. I haven't even cast a single spell so far. <laughs> I, I'm not able to shell dock. I guess Dak is going to get to ultimate soon here. Let's see what you discard. Burst lightning and a land. There's an Urza Saga, sure. And I'm probably going to, yeah, so I'll do that. I don't really have a play. He's going to put that on top, I'm sure. Okay. Lands? There's Misty. Okay. So, I don't have Urza anymore. I think I'd rather show and tell. And pass the turn. Let me just make sure that... Max Smith. Oh, we put Inferno Titan on the bottom. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like I'm going to get counterspelled here. But, again, I'm not, I'm not sure what I can do about that. So one thing that's interesting about this show and tell is what do I put in? Because if I put in Portal, you can steal it with Dak Faden, which I don't love. I'll have to see what creature this is. Oh, a Goldspan Dragon. He's already used Dak this turn. All right, I think I do put in Portal here. <clears throat> Cast Show and Tell. All right. Portal. <laughs> he put in Emrakul. Oh no. So the only thing that's that's brutal about this is now he's gonna shuffle his graveyard. I was kind of counting on stealing the gold span. Okay, because now my portal's gonna get stolen. I'm gonna get to put subtlety into play, but that's not gonna be enough to beat this Dak Faden. Alright. Interesting. All right, let's put subtlety into play. I guess the portal doesn't actually have a good target this turn. Oh, I drew a red, which is actually kind of nice, because now I can go Talisman, Mox, Pia, and Kira Nalar. All right, pass the turn. Lose the flip? No. Uh, you know, this is this could be going worse. It's not going great, but stealing the portal doesn't actually put anything onto the board. There's no creatures in the graveyard. And then next turn, I get to attack with a bunch of creatures, and he's at 10. So, I mean, he does have two cards in hand and is going to get to make a Saga token if he wants. Oh, he's just, he's just searching. Okay, what are we searching for? Retrofitter? Oh. So that's the Academy deck, huh? What did we draw? We drew Thundermaw? Or had it. I mean, I don't know if he had it, if he drew it. Dak Emblem. Does he have Fire Ice or something? I mean, I know he has it in his deck. In his deck, as it were. But he kind of has to use it now, or... Because if I untap with P and Kira on Nalar, then I do get to sack anything that gets targeted. Okay, Hole Breacher, that could also be really nice. Let's... It's minus nine, I don't really care. I'm going to attack... Dak? No, Mac. <laughs> With subtlety. And... I think this is pretty decent. Because if he blocks with Thunder Maw, then I'm going to fling an artifact at Thunder Maw to kill it. And I guess I fling the Talisman. And that lets me keep fling portal mana up, but I think he's probably gonna start by using Dak here, if I had to guess. Lost the flip? No. We're three and two now, so that's not crazy. All right, plus Dak. And then in response, Hole Breacher. Please resolve, please don't have something. Don't have something, 
Don't have. Oh, I get two treasures. He discards his two cards in hand. And then now, even if he was able to steal something, I have the three mana to do it. Boom. Would you look at that? Didn't think I was winning that game. And uh, let's go ahead and take a picture. Wow, that was a game. <laughs> oh. Hmm. What else did he have that was reshuffled? I don't remember. All right. Well, that was that was something. Um, duress seems like it would be pretty good here. Oh, I, I didn't see the chat. I guess Mac meant to minus two the deck, but he minus six the deck instead. Beats, beats by Dre. Um, yeah, I mean, Dak Faden is just going to mess me up. <laughs> I stole that game in a variety of ways. But, yeah, what are you going to do? I mean, Dak Faden's just going to be good. What do I want to cut, though, is kind of the question. I think PN Kernelar is decent. I think Mind Slaver is pretty good. Don't want to cut any blue cards. I could cut Chain Lightning, but that uh, kills Jason Dak, so I probably shouldn't. I could cut a land on the draw. Maybe in the draw, I just cut the forest. All right. Yeah, this will, this will be great. Really good call. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Um, well, this hand is very good, so I'm going to keep it. I could use an untapped land. Really, any land. If I draw any land, I'm pretty happy. Because I, re I really don't... You know what? I'm just going to play the shell duck. I think shell duck's too good to pass up. Uh... That's interesting. Do I want Mind Slaver or Portal? I think I actually want Mind Slaver here. And I'll pass. Jace, sure. All right, land would still be great. Oh, Chain Lightning's not bad. I think I'm gonna do this and then Chain Lightning the Jace. And then pass. This Mox Diamond is becoming terrible. If I draw duress instead of forest, <laughs> that'll that'll be that'll be just what I deserve. Okay, there's a saga's pretty good. Land, 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 land. No land. I'm gonna play Mindstone. The reason I'm playing Mindstone here, even though I don't like tapping out with Remand out, is it's got Urza Saga, so I think it's pretty likely that his play next turn is going to be activate Urza Saga. Okay. Still would like to see lands here. Oh, all right. I mean, I guess this is this is the plan now. If he puts Emrakul into play, then that's not good for me, but I hope Itali can do something about it. I hope he's scared enough of uh, Portal that he doesn't put Emrakul into play. Let's see. World Spine Worm. Okay, okay. Let's see. Can I get Emrakul? Oh, I got Inferno Titan and Hole Breacher. All right, this is going to be a game. <laughs> Mm, let's see. Hole Breacher comes in. Inferno Titan comes in. One and two to you. All right. So World Spine Worm attacks me to one, and then I attack for uh, 13, 16, 19, assuming no blockers. He's going to get to get another token into play. 13, 16, 17. I'm one short. But he got a mana crypt. Okay, I, I'm just gonna take it, go to one here. What were, you can't attack with a construct. All right, uh, yeah, I'll go to one. And, okay. Charmy, oh, okay. I guess there's that. All right, uh, that was game two. So he probably has breach then. Yeah, I, I think that I had to show and tell there. I'm I, I would do that again. I mean, there there are cards that uh, that Itali could hit that went on the spot, and if he doesn't put Emrakul or World Spine Worm, which he has both, which <laughs> I don't love, then I'm in pretty good shape there. If he has anything a little bit weaker, all right, I'm on the play here, and uh, this hand, this hand is just not exciting, but. Am I supposed to mulligan it? Mm, I think I can mulligan it, actually. 
yeah, this hand's way better. I'm going to keep this, put P and Karen Nalar back, and hope to draw land. I mean, this hand at least has Tinker on turn two for a battle ball as an out here. All right, cool. I, I'm just not mulling a, a turn two Tinker hand. And if I draw land, it's still a pretty good one. All right, land, Mox. I think I Tinker here. And I think, hmm, what do I get? Do I get Battle Ball or do I get Portal? I think I just get Battle Sphere. Part of the reason I, I like getting Battle Sphere is I could, if I get an Urza into play, then I have access to a ton of mana. I need not to play exactly that, yes. All right. I guess if I draw a land, I'm, <laughs> all right, land. Way worse than a land, of course. Show and tell. Putting in Urza. And if he puts in something gigantic, then I lose. That's fine, too. He puts Sneak. Okay. I don't like that. I'm unfortunately one mana short of casting Mind Slaver. I guess I should kill Dak. Uh, I can leave one back. Because I can't cast an Activate Mind Slaver in one turn anyway. Yeah. Last game really showed how, how much worse Mox Diamond can be than a Mox. Like, if that was a normal Mox or I had drawn one more land, the trajectory of that game is completely different because I go like land, Mox, Mind Stone, turn two, Shell Dock, whatever. And uh, then this game, mold to a Tinker Hand and hope you didn't have Dak. I, I, I said Dak was going to mess me up, and it did. I'm, I'm, I assume I'm dead to sneak here yeah all right all right down a match but this did seem like a bad matchup because my show and tell was bad or a lot worse than in normal decks and deck Faden really was bad against me all right on to round two Alrighty, time for round two playing against troll ascetic who's on a blue white deck i'm on the draw do i like this hand i actually think i do i would like to draw a land but i have potentially uh an early urza with force back up. All right, and I don't think I need to play the pedal. I'm not sacking the pedal to play Mindstone. Having the force of will just really goes a long way with this hand, Talisman, sure. All right, let's go land, I guess Talisman. Pass the turn, and then next turn, I wouldn't mind drawing a blue card actually. Just so, because I don't really want to pitch either of these to force of will, but if I have to, I will. Talisman into Blades Placer. Oh, touch the Spirit Realm. Sure, I'm not going to force that. Especially since if I draw a land, I can just still play Urza. Which I think I do. All right. And then I have Force back up. And if I have to use the Force, I will. And then next turn if i use the force and draw a land i can spin urza which isn't bad i'm probably gonna force whatever this is yeah okay land would be fine well that's pretty bad and so was my mana tapping <laughs> that was uh i was just kind of talking through let's see hopefully uh matt doesn't have much oh good nothing oh and there's tinker um just spin Urza, play a land, and I, he's got the Wandering Emperor, the Wanderer. I don't really want to attack into it with Urza here. He does also have fourth Eorlingus in his deck, which, and Palace Jailer and Jace, some pretty good cards, so I don't want to just run into it here. All right, Staff of the Storyteller, make a token and draw a card. Hmm. And hopefully doesn't have another good play here. Okay, five mana. Time Warp. Well, Time Warp's fine, but it doesn't actually do much unless you have a follow-up, because it's not like the staff was doing much there. It doesn't have any counters on it. All right, no fourth year Lingus, no Wanderer. Ooh, what is this? I don't like this. Eight mana? Oh, upheaval. Okay. Well, I get my talisman back, and you have two mana left. 
Honestly, this isn't that bad. I guess you can go land, touch the spirit realm. Oh, you're just gonna go double talisman? Sure. Without a mox, that's just not that bad for me because now I go land, mindstone, pass. Uh, I think I discard forest here. My only green card is gone. And staff here is what is what the play is going to be and then i can go urza which gets touched the spirit realm i suppose and draw off staff and pass the turn all right draw island yeah i'm gonna play the urza here okay didn't get dazed i know he has dazed in his deck but i don't really have a way to play around it here at some point i can uh tinker for portal if I ever get the opportunity to. That was just not the most devastating upheaval in the world, honestly. And I have Unholy Heat. I'm not going to be able to play Mindslaver next turn because I'm assuming I'm not untapping with Urza in play. That doesn't seem that likely. If I do, I guess I will get to play Mindslaver, but I kind of feel like that's not something uh, Matt's going to let me do if he's got any way to stop it. What I would like is to play is for him to play something so Tinker for Portal does something, because I have my two other Tinker targets in hand, which isn't ideal, though I'm actually getting close to casting them too. Oh, Blade Splicer. Oh, there we go. There we go. You're just gonna let me Urza for a turn, huh? Or no, you're gonna kill my Urza. Oh, you're killing a construct with prismatic ending. Alright. There's no Thari in the graveyard? I like that. Alright, so let's go land. Ooh, Mox. Interesting. I could play Slaver, but he could just touch the Spirit Realm, the Slaver. I could play... If I Tinker for Portal, he's going to use Touch the Spirit Realm on that. But I think that's actually okay. I wish I had one more artifact in play. Tinker. Oh, I could Golos. For Sheldock. Is that better? That actually probably is better. Okay. Though I guess I should have sacked the other land then in that case. Alright, let's do this. Let's get I just think Sheldock is gonna be awesome here. Oh, and it is. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna put portal under the Sheldock. And pass the turn. I could toast anything with unholy heat. I just don't really need to right now. Okay, you get to draw again. And next turn, well, we'll see what I untap with. It's possible Urza's going down. It's possible uh, Golos is. No, I only have Grixis lands out right now, so I don't think Golos is probably that high of a priority to kill. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Um, so you have seven cards in hand, some on the number of those. One's to touch the spirit realm, some are some lands. That's all I know about right now. I And I, like I said, I do know about a couple cards in Matt's deck here. I knew Jace the Mind Sculptor, Mox Pearl. Teleron Academy would be one that I wouldn't want to see. Luckily, he hasn't had that yet. Fourthy or Lingus, especially if he draws Teleron Academy, could be pretty brutal. He also has seven mana now, which is kind of a lot. Okay, you're just going to send... Not doing anything else? I assume you've got to have something else here. No, he's just passing. Oh, okay. Draw. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I actually will cast Show and Tell here. Because if I can put a Mind Slaver in and then just use it, that sounds pretty great. Mind Slaver. Let's see what you put into play. Nothing. Um... So technically, I could try to put in Portal and then Mind Slaver, but I don't think that's a very good use of my... Uh, I think that's just too risky. Because if the Portal gets countered, then I also don't get to use the Mind Slaver, and it gives them an opportunity to kill the Mind Slaver in response. So let's Slaver you. You're going to touch the Spirit Realm something, like a Blade Splicer maybe. End of turn, you kind of have to do something. 
Yeah. Draw and it's fourth Eorlingus. Okay. Um, and all lands. Let's go. Do I want to make a token? I guess no, because it so I could make a token such that you draw a card off staff. Actually, I kind of like that. Let's put red, white. Let's make one token. And yeah, let that resolve. Draw, because this also lets me use the staff here. And then if you draw something bad, oh, now swift reconfiguration on, who are we reconfiguring? I guess we'll reconfigure the golem. Yeah, and then attack with the human knight token. I don't think, actually, do I want to give me the monarch? You're going to end of turn, get a blade splicer, you have no cards in hand. Yeah, and then I would get to draw. All right, I actually think it's okay to give Matt the Monarch here, because that means I get to take the Monarch as well. I don't think, I actually will play the land in case he draws swords to plowshares. All right, now let's get these on the stack. Get a Blade Splicer, you get a token. Draw, draw, this goes on, draw, draw. Reprieve, all right, tap out then. Okay, um, and then on my turn, portal. Kill your three tokens. Attack for four, become the monarch. And spin Urza, I guess. Oh, I guess I could have also actually mere battle sphered first. Oh, hit remand. All right, well, pass the turn, draw a card. <clears throat> I guess actually battle ball first would have been probably a good idea because I could have gone three, four, five, six, seven, and then activated shell dock on that. Though I think this is still going to be plenty because then next turn on upkeep, I get to get back Othari. An attack for approximately a million here. Mm, I mean, it's actually plays around Wrath better, but I guess with a portal in play, I don't even care about Wrath. So, all right, well. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What do you got? You got a bunch of lands in hand and a reprieve. And yeah, not enough. All right, so game two. Bonfire seems like it could be decent. Do I want duress? I don't know that I want duress that bad. I guess oh, against upheaval, it's pretty good though. All right, and take a forest out on the draw, but I also kind of want the bonfire. Maybe over unholy heat. Maybe I keep the chain lightning. Okay, let's see. Mindslaver did did all right there. It wasn't like amazing, but it was fine. And uh, I think Hold Reacher is going to be very good in this matchup. He does have un uh, Unexpected Absence, Touch the Spirit Realm, Swords to Plowshares, Prismatic Ending, a lot of great white cards. So that much is, is tough. But this is looking like a very good show and tell matchup. Part of the problem with the, playing against Mac was show and tell was like not that good. And I was forced, I think forced into two, two games where I just had to kind of desperation cast it because I was stuck on lands, and uh, both times just didn't work out well. But that was, again, just me being stuck on lands, basically. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, I kind of like how this goes. Hmm. Do I even want Chain Lightning? I guess it kills Wandering Emperor, kills Jace, kills some creatures. But overall, it doesn't seem like spot removal is very good against him. So I think uh, I, think I like having... Bonfire as well. And hoping to yeah, land a Narset or Hole Breacher to stop all his card draw. If I can Hole Breacher in response to like a Jace Brainstorm, that'd be Chef's Kiss. 
they do know about the whole breacher, so that that is a little bit dangerous. But uh, you know, even even so, I might be able to to sneak one in there. Okay, on the draw here, if we can emerge one and one, I won't feel too bad. Let's see what we got. And he went a little deep on sideboarding, though I don't know what that necessarily means. I mean, this deck can turn to Tinker. Oh, it can also turn to Hole Breacher. Okay. Island go, Spire Bluff go. I don't think there's a strong reason to play Mox Jet here. Oh, all right. Let's hope uh, he doesn't have days here. Because if he doesn't have days, and he activates staff, then this is gonna be a bloodbath. Okay, no days, please. Can't swords. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, that's 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 huge. That is absolutely massive. So now, because now we have that in play, land. Oh, I guess I'll just play Narset anyway. And minus it. Duress and Bonfire. All right, I'll take Duress, and I actually will just Duress you now. Hand is Reprieve, Wandering Emperor, Unexpectedly Absent, Karn, Upheaval. Oh, interesting, interesting. With one white mana up. I'm not going to take Reprieve. I don't think I'm going to Chain Lightning the Spirit Token, so I think I'm going to take Wandering Emperor so I can attack. I'll let the spirit hit Narset, because I don't really need a Narset in play, given the circumstances. All right, so he did draw a, a land that couldn't cast uh, Wandering Emperor, so that's unfortunate. But now he goes Karn, makes a token, and I can Chain Lightning the token, and then kill the Karn. And I don't really care about Narset getting hit to two. I actually wouldn't mind drawing a land here. Uh, that's not the worst. All right, I'll get Remand, Chain Lightning the Construct. That Karn. And it's got three cards in hand. It's Unexpectedly Absent, Reprieve, Upheaval. I actually think I just go Show and Tell here and put a Mind Slaver into play because I know that, that he doesn't have anything to put into play. If he draws a Plains, he could Unexpectedly Absent the Mind Slaver, but uh, that's not the end of the world. I'm still in a pretty dominant position here. Can't use Staff of the Storyteller. Reprieve is pretty bad with a whole breacher in play. And I'm going to have Remand up for upheaval. Also have Subtlety up in a second. I mean, I have Subtlety up now, technically, but he's got nothing he can cast. All right, so he's going to unexpectedly absent. Oh, the whole breacher. Interessante. I guess that's interesting. Sure. Draw. Play a land. And I don't really need to Mind Slaver right now. I will at some point here. But... I would kind of want him to get more cards in hand first. So make it more likely the Mind Slaver does something. Okay, I'll take it. 16. Land. Just going to upheaval. I guess I'll remand it and then Mind Slaver you. It's kind of the idea. Okay, Tali, huh? Draw. Alright, a mind slaver you. And pass. You draw. So I think what I just do here is so if I upheaval, you have seven, nine cards in hand. Yeah, I think I just cast upheaval now. And do I want to sack Sunbake Canyon to draw a card? Yeah, I'm going to cast Upheaval. I guess I will draw a card here because I have a lot of lands I can play. So I'll draw. All right, Upheaval resolves. And then you just don't play a land. And discard. I'll discard. So three, six, nine cards. I'll discard planes, planes, I think. 
and then pretty far away. Oh, I drew a Mox Diamond. <laughs> All right. Uh, land, Mox. Mind Slaver was pretty good this game. Casting Upheaval and forcing you to not play a land and discard two cards is pretty amazing. And then now I get to play Hole Breacher. And even Swift re uh, Reconfiguration on Hole Breacher doesn't do anything. Like, the Hole Breacher ability still just persists there. Land. Hit. And I think I just pass. I don't think I want to sail into the west here. I think I'm just going to play a Subtlety end of turn. The next turn maybe sail into the west. You can uh, Swift Reconfiguration something if you want. Yep. But that's text is still in play. And then draw. Land. Mindstone. I could also just draw for my turn. Because if I draw a land, then I get to cast Itali. And if I draw a spell, I guess it does have Reprieve in hand, but it's going to cast Staff anyway. Okay. I think I just draw. All right, well, I guess it would have worked out better the other way. Let's play this. And I think, do I want to plus two it or minus two it? I think I plus two it. I'm going to discard Sail Until the West and Mirror Battles Fear. Draw two, play a land, hit. And then next turn, I can Duretti Mindslaver and set up a, an Atali. I could I could also sack <laughs> Hole Breacher to the Duretti if I wanted to, which is funny because it's an artifact. But I don't really think I need to do that. I'm just going to pass. Mm, land. Let's attack with Subtlety first. I think I have this game pretty much under lockdown. Reprieve in hand. All right. I'll sack. I'll get Mind Slaver back. I guess I'll sack Mox Jet. Or no, maybe I'll sack Mindstone. The reason I'd keep Jet is because now I'm only one mana away from Golosing. Oh, I guess Sunbake Canyon's gone, but no, I can get a green source. And I don't think I'm that likely to want to sack Mindstone if a non token creature. <laughs> Luckily, that's not a creature. Glad I didn't go for the mere battle sphere. I'll sack Mindstone. I'll Mind Slaver you. And pass the turn. At the very least, I can make myself a treasure with the Staff of the Storyteller, which is nice. All right, and that'll do it. Whew. Nice little one and one with some real sick Mind Slaver action. That was great. All right, on to round three. Alrighty, time for round three. Playing against Sam Rolf, who's playing like five color combo. Um. I think I can mulligan this hand. This hand's slow and doesn't even have blue mana. Really would love to see Hole Breacher. I guess I will keep this. And I think put back Sunbaked Canyon. I don't want to put back Lotus Petal because I think playing Golos a turn early is going to be important. I could put back Sunbaked, but I think Cryptic's going to be a little better. And... Uh, yeah, so Sam's got like Frantic Surge, Lotus Field, uh, Brain Freeze, Fast Bond, Inquisition Me. All right, there goes my Talisman, I guess. Could have played the Petal, but I just didn't think any Duress was going to take Petal over Talisman, so. All right, Mindstone? No, Forest. Uh, let's just play this now. All right, well, if I draw another land, Mox Jet would be an amazing draw here. I'll tell you that much. Mox Jet? No. Island is fine because now I've got Cryptic up, though I don't really want to use Lotus Petal on Cryptic. And uh, next turn, I'm going to slam Golos and get Sheldock. So he's got Brain Freeze to kill me, Fast Bond, Crucible, Zuron Orb to gain infinite life and mana. He's got like a bunch of weird stuff going on. I don't know about any counter spells, so I'm just going to Golos here. I don't really see a way around it. Okay, let's get Shelly. Shelly D. Portal is not the 
best in this matchup. He doesn't really have any creatures. Not very many, at the very least. I don't know that I'd side it out, but... All right, I'll put Narset under there. But I certainly don't love Portal. Now I have Cryptic up. I do think Show and Tell's fairly good against him, though he does have Bolus' Citadel to watch out for. Pest Infestation, Zagulos. Okay. Let's play Urza here. I don't think leaving up Cryptic when he's got a top that he's spinning is going to be all that productive. Oh, Stern Scolding. Okay. Pass the turn. Is he going to upkeep top? He did not. We're still pretty far away from Sheldock, unfortunately. Mind Slayer is going to be really important in this match. I would say most turns where I slaver Sam here, it's going to be pretty bad for him. <laughs> he has Zoran Orb in his deck. That card's pretty brutal when you get slavered. Are you getting Demonic Tutor? So he knows I'm going to have Cryptic up next turn. So whatever he's tutoring for, he's going to have to play this turn or have a plan for Cryptic otherwise. Or just get a Lotus Field. Sure, that also works. Okay. Lotus Field, another card that's pretty bad against Cryptic Command, I will say that. And, uh, yeah, let's just pass. I don't think there's a reason to chain lightning here. Spin top. I would like to get to Sheldock, because Narset's fairly good against him. I'm not feeling like a ton of pressure from these pest tokens. It's not like his deck does too much damage anyway, so I don't really even need to chain lightning them. He's not playing lands or doing anything. Okay. Tinker is interesting. Tinker is something I would love to set up. I guess my uh, Mox Jet is on the bottom. I didn't. I never shuffled. Because if I could draw into land, jet, and go like land, Mox, Tinker, Mind Slaver you, that would be pretty ideal. I don't think I'm going to chain lightning the pest for now anyway. And I'm not randomly firing off Cryptic here either. If he wants to go for something that forces me to use the Cryptic, he can. Alright. <laughs> cool. Uh, that's uh, not ideal. Hmm, didn't spin the top. Interesting. What is this? Snapcaster Mage. Okay. That I actually don't mind. Because I want him to spend the mana. What's he going to spend the mana on? Inquisition of Kozilek. So he can't counter the Cryptic, or take the Cryptic, but I don't really want him to take the Tinker either. Counter target spell, draw a card. And if this doesn't work, this doesn't work. Okay, Spire Bluff. All right, tap top. We frantic searching. Yeah, all right. I mean, if I lose this turn, that's fine too. I just feel like, oh, a Troxa, wow. I just feel like uh, him taking my Tinker is me losing one of my biggest win conditions. Okay, since his top, Zernorb. Beseech. All right. What are we beseeching for? You know, brain freeze me. Oh, Manamorphose into brain freeze. I don't have any Eldrazi. So, yeah, that's going to be enough. All right. So, definitely want duress, which I guess I've cited every round. So, clearly I could have uh, done that a little differently. Um,. Hmm. Unholy Heat is pretty terrible. Yeah, I mean, I like the white cards, but I don't think adding another color is really great. I could put in Monastery Swift Spear, but I think my win condition is mostly going to be Mind Slaver. I think Portal is kind of mid, but I guess I could put in Copter and Swift Spear. Subtlety, Subtlety Snapcaster is okay. And then maybe take out Chain Lightning. The old side in Swift Spear take out chain lightning plan. You love to see it. Uh, I don't think I want corpse dance. Yeah, I think I will do this. I don't think putting in Torsten just for show and tell is really what I want to do. All right. Um, yeah, 
really hope he doesn't have Inquisition because if I can land Hole Breacher, then that is a big game. Uh, Stern Scolding also deals with Hole Breacher, which is unfortunate, but Hole Breacher is one of my better cards against him. I would say my best, the most important card against him is Mind Slaver, though I don't really want that in my opening hand. Hole Breacher is maybe the card I want most in my opening hand. And I didn't really see much in the way of removal. He has Abrupt Decay, I guess, but that's going to get me no matter what. So if he goes Inquisition here, then I'll just remand it. All right, land. Oh, Force of Will is fantastic. Maybe that's my best card against him, honestly. All right, cast a card, draw spell. Do it. Leobold. Um, interesting. Let's remand the Leobold. Because I kind of want a hard cast subtlety if I can draw a blue. Mist on blue. Huh. How much do I care about Leobold? I honestly don't know that I care a massive amount. Let's play this. Shell Dock. What do I want to Shell Dock? I guess I would rather Shell Dock a Cryptic more than anything else. And pass. And I think I let Leovold happen. Hmm. That's close. I just really don't want to pitch both force. Like pitching subtlety to force feels pretty bad. I don't have much actual card draw in my deck. Uh, sure. And it is going to make it so the whole breacher doesn't do that much damage. But I also, I could just cast subtlety now to block. A blue card would be nice. Yeah, that actually does help. I'm going to pass. I guess he's not going to attack into, into Hole Breachers, maybe the issue there. Hmm. Oh, no, he is. All right, I'm going to cast Subtlety then, because I still have Force of Will up here. And blocking with Subtlety sounds like a great deal to me. Get Leovold off the board. All right, so basically we got, we killed Leovold without having to use our Force of Will, which is great. And I can force and then play a Battle Sphere next turn, ideally. As this Pest Infestation for four tokens, sure. I don't actually mind that because at some point we'll draw lands and I can block the tokens. I'm going to Narset, pick up a Mind Slaver, I guess. Pass. If he's got Abrupt Decay now, it's going to be pretty awkward. But I feel like if he had Abrupt Decay, he wouldn't have attacked Leovold into Hole Breacher. He gets to kill my Narset if he wants. Oh, he didn't. All right. That's a great deal for me then. Pick up Mox Jet, play a land, play a Mox. I'm just going to cast Mind Slaver here. Pass the turn. I'm really surprised he didn't attack Narset there. I think that was a, was a misstep. All right. Well, didn't even have to use Force of Will, which I guess he probably he doesn't know about technically. I played it against his teammate. Okay, okay. Maybe I want Chain Lightning in because of Leovold. I didn't I didn't know about the Leonard. And just take out Swift Spear, I suppose. And then hope uh, if I draw Copter, I can crew it. <laughs> Seems fine. When you play against combo, you have weird dead cards in your deck. Okay. Well, this hand is great. I do need to draw a land, but oh no. Okay, Oof, I thought that was Inquisition. That'd be a lot worse for me. All right. If I draw a land, this hand becomes amazing. Brain Freeze and Imperial Seal. Guess I take Imperial Seal because he's got Snapcaster and Regrowth, so it's not like taking Brain Freeze at this point in time is that useful. Land, nope. Oh my god. Well, drawing Force of Will is actually pretty good still. Unfortunately, this Tinker can't get Battle Sphere, which is actually what I would get at this point in time. Which means I kind of want to play Narset, which I guess I could force pitching Tinker if I have to. Yeah. I'm going to force, I'm going to pitch Tinker. All right. Land. Okay. Land, Narset. 
minus three, pick up, <laughs> pick up the copter. It's okay, copter can get uh, sacked to ready or discarded to ready. Thief of Sanity, I don't like that. All right, Chain Lightning. Lotus Petal, Mind Sliver. Um, let's go Lotus Petal, Petal, Duretti, and then plus Duretti, discard Mirror Battles, Fear Smuggler's Copter, and I guess play Misty and Pass. All right, so Thief of Sanity can hit me, I guess, but then I get to get back a Battle Ball. Okay, and I can sack Misty because I, I want to see mine have a chance of seeing Mind Slaver again. Well, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a tight one. If I can find a way to kill Thief, that's one thing. Thief, so he's got Brain Freeze, two unknowns in hand. Thief might have to kill Narset here. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe he just hits me. If he's demonic tutoring before attacking, that kind of implies to me that he's not killing Narset with Thief, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. I guess he is. Or that he is killing Narset with Thief, because if you would have, you would have attacked first to see what you would get if you were attacking me. Um, let's just get Island. I don't really need to get a stomping ground here. And yeah, I mean, I think I just get put a Battle Sphere into play. Talisman. Now I can minus two this and. Get a battle sphere, and if he's got uh, abrupt decay, which is I think what he tutored for, I get to, I get to sack an artifact still. Okay. And now you need to. You can hit me with the thief of sanity. I don't have that much that's like bad and crazy good to get. The other thing is, if he hits thief and sees mind slaver, he kind of has to. Put it in the exile zone because if he puts it in the graveyard, I get to deready it. So that's not going to work out. It's attacking me. Okay. I also get to deready a smuggler's copter into play, though, under my theory that he demonic tutored for abrupt decay, hoping to bait me. Uh, I think there's a decent chance that that's what he has. Could also have cryptic command. What do I want to draw here? Oh, he, he, he got Urza instead, sure. Uh, I don't know. Drawing Mind Slaver would be pretty nice. Hole Breacher. Oh, man, the only problem with that is I think he's got Abrupt Decay, but I think that's okay. So what I'm going to do here is attack with Battle Ball. Tap two of the tokens. Okay, you go to 10. And then minus on Smuggler's Copter, sacking a tap token. I think I still play my land and then pass the turn. Now I've got Copter to block Thief, which I think is gonna prompt him to decay the Copter. Yeah, he's gotta have abrupt decay now. Is he attacking me? I don't know. Yep, but that means he can't abrupt decay the uh, Hole Breacher, so if he plays a card draw spell, I get to Hole Breacher. Obviously, I'm getting pretty low in deck. Oh, he didn't want Chain Lightning. I don't love that. Okay, the question then is, do I cast Hole Breacher end of turn if he passes? I guess he's casting a spell, so that's not... Casting my Mind Stone, sure. I kind of feel like I don't cast Hole Breacher unless he casts a card draw spell. Let's draw. All right, I'm at 15 cards. I'm gonna discard this to draw. Okay, Cryptic was really good. Does punish me for not casting Hole Breacher attack. And now I'm just gonna do this because this makes Mere Battlesphere lethal. Oh, should I have just Cryptic to go for the win? 
probably... I'm worried that he'd have remand. No, I guess he had the Mind Stone. Just going to spin. Yeah, no, I should have I should have just cryptic to tap there and just hoped he didn't have anything, I think. I think that would have been better. Okay, I'm going to get attacked. I guess I let this happen. Yeah, no, that... Cryptic is good, but I think that was too defensive of a play. Yeah, no good, no good. Not a good play. That no, that was the wrong. That was the wrong play. I hope I don't lose as a result. Though I think I'm going to. Seems pretty hard for him not to have enough to brain freeze me here. Snapcaster Mage. In response, brain freeze. Oh, okay. This might actually work okay. Because he's brain freezing me for six, and then I counter the Snapcaster. Okay, counter target spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. I'm going to counter it and bounce Urza. And if he's got a, if he's got something, he's got something. But if he's spinning top, that looks like a pretty good start for me. Whew. I kind of didn't deserve it. I, I think I should have just gone for it. But we got the match, and uh, the undeserved wins are sometimes the best. All right, this deck was solid. I didn't get every piece I wanted, but there was three artifact decks at the table. Mac had that blue-red deck. Uh, Troll Ascetic had an academy in his deck, and uh, I was also doing artifacts. But I did have Tinker and Show and Tell plus Portal with Battle Ball and Mind Slaver as well. And that's like a pretty good package. Like these, those five cards plus a bunch of cheap, it, you know, little dumb idiot mana rocks is pretty good. Urza is good, and then having Force of Will and Subtlety is also pretty good. Not even the best Hole Breacher, but it's still such a good card. So, solid 2-1, don't mind. And uh, Mac was such a terrible matchup that I really don't mind escaping with a 2-1. That'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. We got uh, to get some good Show & Tell action where we cast it and lost every game. That's not true. We actually did win some games off Show & Tell. But most of all, we got to do some good mind slavering. So I hope you were in, in for that. That was very enjoyable. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. I'll see you then. <laughs>